Let's take a look at this picture while we're talking about some of your treatment options for periodontal disease. Basically, we have three. Conventional periodontal treatment includes scaling and root planing, otherwise known as deep cleaning, osteosurgery, otherwise known as gum surgery, and laser periodontal therapy, otherwise known as LINAP, or Laser Assisted New Attachment Procedure, the first and only university-researched and FDA-approved laser periodontal treatment, requiring a specific laser and patented protocol to achieve it. Okay. Let's start with scaling and root planing. Basically, with scaling and root planing, it is a deep, aggressive cleaning. You're numb during the procedure so that we can get down to the bottom of the pocket and do a real thorough job cleaning the tooth. Now, the problem is that we have very limited access to get down to the bottom of the pocket. And we can't see down there, so we're basically working by braille. So we're likely going to miss some of the calculus, especially in the deeper pockets. Even in conjunction with the use of medication, we don't expect to see a strong fibrous reconnection or any bone improvement. If after scaling and root planning, a deep pocket persists, the next conventional treatment option is to do gum surgery. Basically, if we still have a six millimeter pocket and we cut the gum here and take this piece away, we've left about a two millimeter pocket behind. The goal of gum surgery is to create shallow pockets with the hope that we can slow the progression of the disease process. Basically, it's the intentional reduction of the height of the gum, which doesn't look pretty and leaves the root sensitive to temperature and more prone to getting cavities. The problem with periodontitis is that most people don't find the treatment options appealing. And unfortunately, there is no cure even the laser isn't a magic wand. Like diabetes and high blood pressure, we can get you to a healthy level, but then we need to work to maintain you there with regular and frequent cleanings. Once a periodontal patient, always a periodontal patient. You can be treated, but it requires maintenance to keep you at a healthy level. And if you've had gum surgery and we've already cut the gums, if after some time a pocket comes back, well, we can't keep cutting you, eventually we run out of something to work with. Now the difference between gum surgery and laser periodontal therapy is basically the difference between treatment by amputation versus treatment by regeneration. With laser periodontal therapy, there is no intentional reduction of the height of the gum. Now we use the laser initially between the gum and the tooth to kill bacteria inside of the pocket, which remember is the source of the problem. It also affects the calculus, so it's easier to remove. And we're removing this diseased lining on the inside of the pocket without damaging the healthy fibers that live underneath. The laser can see the difference between healthy tissue and diseased tissue. And it can see where the bacteria is and specifically kills those as well. Now we have better access to get into the pocket and do a better job removing the calculus from the surface of the tooth. We use ultrasonic instruments that vibrate the calculus off the surface of the tooth and flush it out with antibacterial irrigation. We then use the laser on a different setting, killing bacteria again, and creating my super duper blood clot, or what I like to call my biological band-aid, that keeps high concentrations of bacteria and debris out of the area. Now this seals the gum up against the tooth. We haven't killed every microbe of bacteria forever, and we haven't sealed the gum up against the tooth forever, but we've created a clean, disinfected, closed and stable environment for the body to be able to kick in its own natural defenses. There's a little war going on down here. The bacteria against your immune system, and unfortunately, you're losing the war. When we use the laser, we are tipping the scales in favor of regeneration versus degeneration. If you think about it, we have the ability to build ourselves back. We can grow fibrous tissue, we can grow bone. That's why we don't amputate a broken arm, good thing. Mm -hmm. But we only do it under the right circumstances. If you think about it, we have a cast on a cleaned up, disinfected arm so that the body has a chance to grow back. Well, the problem is the mouth is a dirty, unstable place. But with the help of the laser, we can create that closed, disinfected environment so that the body has a chance to kick in its own natural defenses and start to rebuild. 
In order to stabilize the area, we need to find any areas where you might be hitting your teeth together too hard or inappropriately. And once we find those areas, especially in the spots where your pockets are very deep, you have a lot of bone loss, or the teeth are loose, we need to spot grind them away. Then we leave the area alone. We don't want to mechanically disturb the area, don't want you to chew on it. You're on a soft food diet for about a week and we want you to follow special cleaning instructions. Now you're not on a soft diet because you won't feel like chewing over there. We just don't want you to disturb the area. Now we don't go back in here and reprobe the area for about nine to 12 months after the treatment is done. That doesn't mean we're not seeing you during that period of time. After everything is done, we'd like to see you back a month after for surface cleaning and to reevaluate the healing. And then it is the recommendation, standard recommendation for periodontal patients that you have your teeth cleaned every three months to keep yourself healthy and maintained. It's the best insurance policy that you could give yourself because we don't want to have platinum calculus and the bacteria that live inside it start to destroy these new attachments that are starting to form in the pocket. They are more easily destroyed than what you had when your teeth and your gums were healthy. Now we can't grow everything back that you had before, but we are consistently finding new fibrous attachment and improvement in bone quality, if not quantity. We just can't guarantee how much and where. We do routinely see pocket depths reduced by about half. And by comparison with conventional periodontal treatment, we see patients with less pain, bleeding, swelling, less reduction of the tissue height, less downtime, less re recovery time, and a much greater overall patient satisfaction, and if I might add, much greater doctor satisfaction, <laughs> providing a, a very effective and wonderful treatment to the many patients who need it. Do you treat the whole mouth at once? We can treat the whole mouth at once, or we can treat you in halves, where we treat the right side, and then quickly thereafter, treat the left side, and a week after that, make sure everything is healing well. A month after everything is done, we want to see you for a surface cleaning and to make sure that everything is healing properly. And then you're here for your regular three-month cleanings indefinitely to make sure things are under control. Is this going to hurt? Well, during the procedure, you're numb, so you're not going to have any pain. After the procedure is done, you'll feel like, yeah, I had work done today, but you're not in agonizing pain. Usually an over-the-counter pain medication will keep you comfortable. Certainly, by comparison to conventional gum surgery, patients are surprised and very pleased. Are some people more prone to get gum disease? Yes, even though the direct cause of periodontitis is a bacterial infection, how you react to the presence of that bacteria is influenced by many other factors. There's a strong hereditary link to periodontitis. It may run in your family. Things like overall health, nutrition, stress levels, smoking, history of dental care or lack thereof, all play a part in how you respond to periodontal disease. Does this cost more than regular gum surgery? Typically, no. The costs are about comparable to conventional gum surgery, sometimes even less, considering that oftentimes scaling and root planing needs to be done prior to gum surgery and needs to be paid for whereas with laser periodontal therapy, we don't require scaling and replaning to be done first. Does my insurance cover any of this? Typically, we can get some insurance benefits towards this procedure. We'll just have to look at the details of your plan, and we'll let you know.